What's up guys, my name is Amanda. My name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Today we have a super unique video for you guys. We're super excited. You may have seen that we have been hosting women's only fishing camps. Yes, so literally a woman's fish camp means that we are taking all women out. You have to be a lady angler to be part of this. No experience required whatsoever. And we are teaching them everything from how to tie a uni, throw a cast net, what else are we teaching them? We taught them how to catch bait. We taught them how to catch snappers. We're catching goliath groupers. We have caught so many fish. We're catching so many fish. We are working with, we're doing this whole camp with two conks. We have Captain Cam. We have Captain Roger from two conks. And to this video, you may notice, we're gonna have Mikey, who's our camera guy. He's gonna be helping us in this whole process because we wanna make sure that we're really working with the ladies the whole time, but we really want you guys there too. And we wanna show you guys and you guys get to learn with us as well. In this camp, we had 12 lady anglers fishing with us. So that meant we had two boats. So on day one, I was on the 32 with Captain Roger, and Emily was fishing with Captain Cam on the 36. Mm -hmm. The first thing Emily and you guys did was go catch some pinfish. So if you guys want to come back here, you're welcome to come look. All right. So Cam's getting another ch block of chum. What we do is we put the chum here. And then they smell it and they come in through these holes. And you can actually like bend these to make smaller holes if you want smaller bait or bigger baits. How long will that take? When's the next time we'll have to check out that? I mean, they'll live in there for a few days. For a while. They're pretty hardy baits. But the, the chum block won't last a few days, maybe like a few hours. So something else, some of these traps have two holes. And depending on where you are, sometimes you want it facing a certain direction based on the current and tides. You can get them with four holes and then you don't have to worry about it and you can just throw it. The reason why you're gonna to wanna to put your, your trap into the current is because that's where the chum moves. The chum, basically you're creating a chum slick. So then the fish will smell it and they'll follow that chum slick into the trap. Although we were targeting yellowtail snappers, the very first fish we caught was actually a yellowjack. Yellowjacks are super cool fish. They're one of the few jack fish that don't have worms and they're actually really, really great eating. So it was exciting to have a quality jack fish in the box first thing. What did you have on here? Uh, a pinfish. A pinfish? Cool, okay. On a knocker rig? Yeah. Cool, okay. Could be a grouper or a mutton snapper. Could be a shark, but I don't think it's a shark. It's not acting like one. There you go. Got it? Yeah, uh, we can bring the net over. Okay. Come on back. Do you want to net it? No. You want me to net it? <laughs> Alright, so let's see. You're going to need to help me get your fish in the net. Oh, we got a yellow net! If he was a yellow... Uh, a jack crevalli, amberjack, amoco jacks. A lot of those jacks will have worms, but these jacks are actually really good eating. So it's really cool. You can eat those as sushi or you can cook those. So we'll have, hopefully, yeah, we have options. We'll cook them for dinner. I don't think this is a yellowtail. I'm thinking it's a bonita. Uh, what do you think it is? I don't know. We saw bonitas earlier. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't know that, so don't, you never know. It could be something really nice. Yeah. Oh, right back there. oh, it's a yellow jack. Ooh, just swing them in. There you go. Okay, so it's just like a leverage, a, like a weight thing. So you want to put the D hooker by the uh, yeah. hook, okay? And then I'm just going to rotate it and then just shake it. And then the fish comes off. A 
along with teaching the girls to yellowtail, we taught them how to tie a knocker rig. And a knocker rig is great for bottom fishing the reef. When you're yellowtailing, you're more so fishing different depths of the water column. But you can also take advantage of that bottom and you can fish that bottom with a knocker rig. We show them how to rig their knocker rig and we showed them how to catch fish on it. And you can catch groupers on your knocker rig. And the girls were catching so many groupers, but unfortunately groupers will pull you into the rocks. I think you're in, I think you're in bottom. Well, you either hooked bottom or you hooked a fish and the fish swam in bottom. It's one of the two. So one option is if you had a fish on any swam in the bottom, you can open the bale and you can sit here and you can see if he swims out. Okay. So just sit here, hold your line lightly. Like with my finger? Yeah, just lightly. Wait, oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, he's there. Okay, close the veil, real, real. There you go. That worked. Okay. Got him out. What did you have on here? A belly. Okay. He's still there. He might have come off. Well, you had something. <laughs> the groupers, what they'll do is they'll eat your bait, and then they'll go into their hole. And if you don't reel, reel quick enough and get them out. Sometimes you'll literally be sitting there reeling against the sea floor. So one thing you can do is when that happens, like when you're reeling and you were just hearing the drag go and you weren't gaining at all, is you can open the bale yep. and then it makes the fish feel like he's not doesn't have tension and maybe he'll swim back out and then give it 60 seconds, two minutes, come back, close the bale and reel really quickly. And so you kind of catch him off guard and then you get tight on him and you can get him out of the bottom. What's cool about these different rigs is that you can fish them with all sorts of baits. So we were teaching them how to hook pinfish, ballyhoo, shrimps, everything, every rig had different baits and, and we were teaching them. You also taught them how to debone a ballyhoo. I did, I did teach them how to debone a ballyhoo. That was cool. So we taught them how to debone a ballyhoo, hook a ballyhoo, and catch the targeted species. This side first, and then just go down the back, boom. Yep. And I flip it, and I go on the other side, and then down the backbone. And the big part really is just you don't want the tail. So that's like, like if you, st if you started a little lower, that's even okay. It's just as long as you get the tail off. Yeah. After fishing at our first location, now today was, it, the weather was very weird and we had a lot of odd current, current against wind, no current, thunderstorms going on. So the bite was, I would just say bizarre. Unusual. Unusual. So we decided to switch locations and while we were going to go switch locations, we showed them how to use an anchor ball, which is our personal favorite. You guys may have already seen that seen anchor that video. ball video. And if you have seen it, I'll, or if you haven't seen it, I will link it in the description box for you guys to go look at because you are going to save your backs. But you're going to want to put the line of the anchor, like you can see there's a split here. So it's going to go through the ring. And then we're going to take the carabiner and you're going to clip it like that. And then what Cam's gonna do is he's gonna drive forward in kind of like a big circle or like at an angle and the line, this ball, is gonna go down the line all the way to the anchor. And what's gonna happen is the pressure of the ball, which is this way, is gonna be pulling on the anchor line. It'll actually pop your anchor up and this ball will float your anchor. So then once, once you see your ball pop up back there, which you'll see the whole thing, all you have to do is pull the line in more horizontally, like not vertically, because it's out on the surface and then hold, just, you're good. hold the ball so it doesn't roll and then we take the carabiner and we need it to go through both these okay. loops see how it's like that now yep and you can literally toss the ball in the water and this as we start driving yep. that ball is going to slide down the anchor rope all the way to the anchor okay. it's going to pop up so we're going to start driving this way and the ball will go this way okay. and then it pops up While we were out fishing, we saw so many frigate birds, and that's something you guys really want to think about when you're out fishing, is to keep your eyes in the sky, as Mikey said to us. I love that slogan, I've never heard it before. <laughs> keep your eyes in the sky while fishing the reef. And the frigate birds, they'll tell you a lot. They, there could be a sailfish underneath them. There could be lots There's of bait. There could be bait underneath them. If you're offshore, there could be mahi underneath them. And the cool thing about frigate birds is if you're wondering if it's a male or female, it's actually very easy to tell the difference. Male frigate birds, have a red, it's like a red neck belly, and belly. Yeah, and the females have white necks and bellies. And it's kind of like the peacock concept. The male peacocks are very pretty and the females 
are a little more dull looking. So the males are red. The males the, want to attract the females. The females and say, hey, come look at me. And then we're over there looking at the frigate birds and, and we're saying, being like, hey. hey, I'm looking at you. Can you show me where the fish are? On my boat, which I was fishing so close to Emily and Cam, and we were waving at each other all day long, Mandy, one of the girls on our boat, she caught a red grouper. And I'm telling you, it was amazing. We didn't know what she caught. She's sitting here reeling and reeling she caught this it, fish. She caught it trying a yellowtail, right? She caught it trying a yellowtail on a teeny, tiny yellowtail jig, like this big. And we didn't know what it was, and all of a sudden it comes to the surface, like, quick. Her drag was very loose, so I went and I tightened her drag a couple of Once you clicks. saw the gr grouper, Once I, I was realized like... the grouper, like, oh my gosh, like, I tightened her drag to make sure she could keep it out of the rocks, and um, as soon as it came to the surface, she almost went to pull it out of the water, and we were all like, wait, we can't swing this one, it's a grouper. So Roger ran and grabbed the net, we netted this fish, we pulled in the boat, and like, our entire boat screamed. Oh, we, we heard were... it. I heard it from my boat. I heard them screaming, we all look over, and they're holding the red grouper, and everyone's tearing. We were so excited, because this fishing day was, we were learning a ton, but the bite was, like I said, just very all over the place. I mean, Mandy caught, a red grouper on a yellowtail jig this big and a piece of shrimp. A keeper, a huge red grouper, not yes. like some tiny, it was just, it's kind of like a goliath grouper catching a goliath on like a tiny bait. Elephants eat peanuts though. That's true. I'll show you how I would do a snapper this size first. Um, but basically, you want to angle your knife right behind this fin and up to the head. And you're going to cut straight down until you feel that backbone. And you'll feel it. Like that? Yeah, so what you want to do, keep their fish close to the end of the table so it's close to you. There you go, and keep your fingers up. Like, like I like to, I keep my fingers like this, you know what I mean? Okay. Push down on the fish. Okay, pushing. Yep, and then just slide it down. You gotta get to the scales am I, perfect. Am I like a star? Oh, that's good. Like, yep. I don't know how to do that. And then stop there. That's probably the back one. Do you feel that back one okay, there? Yeah. Okay, now I'll show you the next part. So once like you feel that backbone, and you'll feel it mostly on this part of your knife, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you're gonna want to turn your knife. Oh, that would be great because it's getting to get. Can you try turning your knife? It's like a little saw. Saw it like one time. There, perfect. All right, and then you're gonna follow the backbone down the fish. So push a little. Can use you the, the, the heel of your knife. So use the heel of your knife. Okay. Like up, right. Up. Against the backbone. Yeah. There you go. And then try to push down, angle your knife a little bit down more. Angle down a little more, there you go. And then go all the way through. And then slide straight through, and then flip it over. So that was really good, actually. I hope I actually got a No, that was really good. So Sorry. No, that was really good. The best part about this entire camp is we get to take our fish home. Well, we don't take our fish home. We're taking to our fish restaurant. to a restaurant to Lazy Days. And all the girls and all the crew, we get to eat dinner together and eat our fish. We had our fish five different ways. Lazy Day style is my personal favorite. Yeah, jalapeno way. style. The jalapeno style. So, I mean, it's inspiring me to create some fishing recipes right now. But it was super nice to go, and all the girls got to eat the fish that they caught, which I think just adds to the total experience. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this episode, part one of our Ladies Fish Camp. Stay tuned because part, part two, two is coming very soon. Part two, we went to the Gulf of Mexico. So we did a completely different completely type of fishing. Completely different fishing. We caught goliath groupers and sharks and stingrays. So if you guys want to see all that, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Facebook Instagram, Instagram, YouTube.